Uh, so I would like to thank you, first of all, for this invitation. It is a great pleasure, a great honor for me uh, to be with you today. And I am uh, also glad to meet so uh, many old friends <laughs> after, uh, after a long time in uh, some cases. And before I begin, I also have to make uh, two disclaimers. Uh, first of all, uh, my knowledge of fandom and fan fiction is rather superficial. Uh, I had a brush, we can say, with some fandoms many years ago, uh, fandoms such as Star Trek or Lord of the Rings or Sherlock. However, I lack a deeper insight into fandom and fan fiction universe. I don't consider my, myself uh, an expert, really. Uh, so please be indulgent with me. And secondly, uh, fan fiction is really a huge topic, uh, so uh, we don't have time to cover all the problems uh, related to it, I will uh, only touch up on, uh, upon some points and glaze over many others. Uh, because what I'm interested here mainly uh, today is a potential or a real interaction between the literature and fan fiction and the influence of the latter on the, the literary practices within popular culture and uh, youth literature, um, because well, the borders now between popular literature and young adults literature, youth literatures are often blurred today, so it's not easy to say which kind of literature we are talking about um, frequently. Uh, so, uh, however, I, uh, before I move to this, uh, to this uh, particular problem, I feel I need to cover some uh, of my bases. First of all, what is fan fiction? I am not asking you what is fan fiction because I presume if you are here today uh, at this conference you know what is this. Uh, but um, during last month I uh, carried on a, a small experiment, we can uh, call it so, and I asked everyone I know at the university uh, this exact question, what is fan fiction? And uh, the answers I got were quite uh, different, interesting. Uh, well, uh, so some people just thought it is science fiction, it's another name for science fiction. Um, some suggested it could be a film adaptation of a literary work, and there were also some colleagues who told me, oh, this is a new Rai television uh, series, probably. So, uh, especially in Italy, uh, especially in academic circles, fan fiction is something really very exotic and, and uh, unknown uh, quant uh, entity. Uh, here we have the official, so to call, um, definition of fan fiction and uh, where we can uh, immediately see that this is also a definition which is not uh, very helpful, because if we uh, define fan fiction as a transformative creation uh, based on uh, a, a previous text, text and, uh, and expanding upon on altering and previous text, well, uh, a great part of world literature could be called fan fiction just to stay within the field of youth literature, the uh, book which is all often uh, considered um, the founding no, book for uh, the opening book for the uh, history of children's literature, the uh, Les Aventures de Telemaque uh, uh, of the French author Fenelon is in fact a kind of fan fiction based on Odyssey. So, uh, Okay, so what is the difference between literature and fan fiction? Okay, if we talk about fan fiction, uh, the modern incarnation of fan fiction, uh, there are two defining moments, I think, which we uh, need to bear in mind. Uh, two moments, uh, two crucial moments in the uh, development and evolution of fan fiction as it is known today. Uh, firstly, in the uh, 1960s, when the widespread uh, introduction of television and other forms of media uh, brought sharp cu cultural text to unprecedented number of people, because sharing, community and sharing, these are two key words when we are talking uh, about fan fiction. Fan fiction is a shared, a shared um, experience. Uh, 
you need a community to share your uh, fan fiction, to, to make it flourish and exist and have sense. And another crucial moment, maybe even more important, especially for fan fiction, because the first moment, the 60s, are important for the development of uh, fandoms, and fan fiction is the part of fandoms. But uh, what is really very, very important for fan fiction is the advent of Web uh, 2.0 and its tools, because it was uh, Web 2.0 which uh, transformed fan fiction from a marginalized uh, activity for some uh, for some nerds oh sorry uh, for some nerds from some some um, fanatics we know that fandom uh, stems from fanatic no uh, into a global phenomenon into a phenomenon uh, which can connect millions of people uh, worldwide which doesn't know borders okay because well uh, a chinese uh, reader of fan fiction can easily connect with American or Brazilian or Polish or French fan. They can all share the same experience, which, as we said, is the uh, fundamental trait of uh, modern uh, fan fiction. And uh, another very important, maybe not always uh, understood as such, but it's uh, crucial, in my opinion, for the literary, uh, let's say, it, angle of uh, fan fiction um, element is uh, which was uh, made possible by uh, the web to zero is the creation of the multi fandom uh, archives why is it so important because um, in, in the beginning uh, the activity of fan fiction was uh, limited to single fandoms okay so i don't know star trek fan fiction was related to star trek fandom uh, and Lord of the Rings uh, fan fiction was related to Lord of the Rings fandoms and so on. So uh, fan fiction was part, was one of several activities of the fandom. But the creation of the multi-fandom archives shifted uh, in a way the status of fan fiction from an activity of the fandom uh, to uh, and, uh, the activity of creative writing, because in, in such on such websites like FanFiction.net or Archive of Our Own, uh, just to quote to uh, most uh, well known, uh, uh, what is central and fundamental is the uh, the universe, universe of different stories, uh, which are not. Uh, which can meet, which can uh, cross the borders, okay? And so the uh, the practice of writing and the uh, techniques of writing are more important than the relation, the connection of these stories to a singular fandom. So this is a very important shift in my opinion. Uh, another. Uh, element we should bear in mind and uh, <laughs> it's uh, really amazing uh, that uh, even if fan fiction today is huge and when i say huge i mean huge with capital letters and still uh, by many people uh, considered something of a marginal or not important uh, peripheral activity um, um, this fact of you can you can see here one of these fancy uh, maps um, uh, st stylometric tools can create and you can see that of course the English fan fiction has uh, a dominant um, role in the whole fan fiction universe. There are of course fan fictions in other languages like French, uh, Spanish, of course, others, uh, German, Polish, uh, Chinese, and so on, but English is dominant language of um, fan fiction, and it also helps to connect uh, fans uh, or readers from different countries uh, and uh, who originate from different languages as well. So this uh, unsurmountable volume of fan fiction stories does not allow generalization about its features or authors or readership. So every definition uh, that you can read about fan fiction, uh, every uh, attempt to um, establish 
uh, some definite uh, threats of fan fiction is uh, not so much false, but always incomplete. We cannot say that fan fiction uh, um, is the activity typical of uh, teenagers. Yes, of course, uh, teenagers, young people are predominant uh, among uh, fan fiction authors and readers, but they are also uh, people of a certain age. Once it was uh, uh, considered a, a, a field of bored middle aged housewives, for example. Now, this is also not true, but there are some white middle aged, middle -aged uh, housewives who are writing fan fiction. So, everything you say about fan fiction, in a way, will be true because there, is, there are so many of them. In fact, the quantity of fan fiction published online in the last 20 years rivals 80 billion words of Google Books English language fiction covering past five centuries. And this is our these are only 20 years. Uh, and uh, as early uh, as uh, 2013, fan fiction authors were producing about 80,000 narratives per month. We are talking only English uh, fanfics. Uh, and in the United States, about 1,300 books are published every month. So you can see the difference in quantity here. And uh, yes, I already mentioned uh, archive, uh, archive of our own, which is maybe the most uh, popular um, uh, fan fiction repository now, founded in 2008, which counted 2 million stories and seven, uh, 750,000 users in uh, 2016. And as today, it quadruplicates quadruplicated in just five years, uh, the number of stories and the number of users. So it is uh, growing exponentially. Um, I won't talk about uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, types of fandom and the relation uh, you can have between fandom and fan fiction because this is another interesting topic, but we don't have time for it. So let's just um, mention uh, that we have um, essentially two kinds of fandoms, curatorial versus transformative fandom. And transformative uh, fandom, uh, which seeks to change the source material, to reflect its needs, or to analyze the source material uh, to understand why these needs aren't being met, uh, is the um, most important for the development on fan fiction. This is the force behind the fan fiction. Curatorial uh, fandom is less keen on creating fan fiction narratives. Uh, and uh, as we know, uh, fan fiction is created mostly by women, uh, by female writers, not exclusively, but mostly by uh, LGBTQ uh, people and uh, people of color, especially in America, not in Poland, I can imagine. Um, fan fiction uh, has been already um, object of several studies, not so many, but there is already uh, there are already several, if you are interested in, and uh, these studies analyzed uh, uh, different uh, issues, different topics, uh, problems related to uh, fandom, uh, such as uh, legality or copyright issues, uh, very important, of course, being uh, fan fiction derivative works, uh, feminism and identity among fan fiction authors, educational potential of fan fiction, language acquisition among English language learners, uh, sexuality, uh, fandom and fan fiction history. Uh, so uh, quite a lot, uh, not so many books, uh, but uh, already quite a lot of essays, articles, and uh, they involve uh, mainly media studies, ethnographic studies, cultural anthropology studies, gender studies, audience studies, also quantitative studies, because yes, being uh, fan fiction such a huge you know, uh, material, it's uh, very, um, very uh, interesting for uh, our quantitative analysis uh, for computers. What lacks here, and I, I think we can all see this immediately, uh, it's a literary approach. Okay, so uh, uh, fan fiction has been analyzed under uh, 
every possible angle we can say, but not uh, not as a literature work. Not uh, it has been refused uh, so far li literature status, and the um, literature approach is practically not existent. Um, within the studies on fan fiction. Uh, here you have some uh, most relevant publications, uh, to begin with the um, founding text by Henry Jenkins, Textual Poachers, Television Fans and Participatory Culture, uh, uh, which devotes quite a lot of attention also to fan fiction. Uh, or Jamison, why fan fiction is taking over the world. Um, Christine Tosenberg, uh, uh, I think, is one of the few authors who uh, actually uh, toys with the idea of the interaction between uh, fan fiction and literature. So even if it's not a book, it's an article, I put it here. And you can see that also in Poland, uh, slowly, <laughs> but there are first um, uh, works dedicated to fan fiction uh, as well. Uh, more to fandom, more to fandom, so uh, media studies and sociological studies, but uh, there is also the, the book by Lydia Gonsowska, Fan Fiction, Nowe Formy Opowieści. So, and recently, Chińskie Bajki, Fandom Mangi and Anime uh, is about fan fiction, uh, even if in the title uh, we talk about fandom. But literature and fan fiction, this is a, a topic which is not really uh, explored or analyzed. Uh, I would uh, risk <laughs> the, um, uh, the thesis that if we were to compare literature to uh, Dr. Jekyll, uh, fan fiction is probably seen as Mr. Hyde, it's uh, something monstrous, some, the dark side of uh, literature. So there is this rejection or even consider uh, the possibility um, of fan fiction uh, being a literature or, uh, attri uh, or attributing the status of uh, literary status of fan fiction well. Um, but why, uh, why to be afraid of fan fiction? Where, uh, where is this terror of fan fiction um, born? What, what, what are the motives behind this uh, rejection? Uh, um, you probably. Uh, met occasionally with some opinions expressed by uh, mainstream media about fan fictions, they are generally very negative. Uh, mainstream media um, love uh, to uh, highlight the uh, pornographic uh, elements of uh, fan fiction. Um, and uh, also indicate that they are uh, written by teenager. Uh, even some fans, you know, some within the fandom, there are critics of uh, the fan fiction written by teenagers. And um, these communities of fan fiction authors, especially teenager, uh, teenagers, are often denigrated or dismissed. Um, and this, uh, if, we, if we look closely into this uh, uh, rejection or derision of the uh, writing by uh, young authors, uh, it uh, frequently takes place along gender lines. It's uh, surely related to the fact that most fan fiction authors are females. And uh, um, we have this uh, uh, stereotypical uh, image of the fan girl, no hysterical. Uh, emotional and obsessed uh, with her um, idol or actor. Now th this is the image which has been perpetuated by uh, mainstream media since, uh, at least since Beatlemania. While male fans obsessed with uh, football, let's say, are never seen in such a negative way. So there is uh, definitely some gender problem behind the uh, denigration of fan fiction. Uh, yes, and you can see some of the uh, um, some of the popular opinions uh, about uh, fan fiction. So uh, all fan fiction is slash, and all slash is pornographic. All slash is written by straight teenage girls. Uh, so and uh, the girls who are borderline illiterate. 
and this is wrong for moral estate and illegal, illegal reasons. So there is a very strong resistance against fanfic and uh, against attributing any positive uh, qualities to the fanfiction. Uh, and let us just see very, uh, mm, very uh, quickly the main objection. Uh, well, one of the problems is, uh, as I said, that fanfiction is often seen just as one of many activities of the fandom. So like uh, cosplays, going to conventions, uh, collecting uh, action figures. Okay, so seen uh, in this context, uh, of course, fanfiction cannot have uh, um, really uh, any aesthetic value. Also, uh, yes, in the, um, in the definition, we have the fact of the derivative work, drawing on works by other authors. So uh, the definition proposed by uh, Yankees, uh, um, fan fiction uh, authors are poachers, okay? They, they appropriate illegally uh, the creation of other um, people, of the authors. And uh, now I, uh, I will propose the motion to uh, uh, prosecute, uh, prosecute uh, Tom Stoppard for, uh, for writing Gilderstein and Rosencrantz are dead, because this is obviously a fan fiction of Hamlet. But uh, as, as far as I know, Stoppard was not really denigrated for writing it. So uh, there's double standard. Uh, low quality, which of course is true. Yes, if you have 80,000 narratives every month written by uh, teenagers or, however, the people who uh, just try to write something for the first time in their lives, they, this is often low quality. Now, however, um, I would say that most of popular uh, literature, which is published officially um, uh, in our countries, is really low quality. We have so many new books every month, and most of them are really trash, if I uh, may say so. So it's not really a, a good criter criterion for denigrating fan fiction. Uh, they are not published, and this is, of course, true. This is the, um, the difference between what is uh, officially recognized as literature and fan fiction. Fan fiction is not published, and fan fiction authors uh, usually don't want to publish it because um, publishing meets, uh, uh, means um, uh, accept rules, accept imposed requirements from the publishers. Uh, and um, a fan fiction, a story published in the internet, it's free. I can write whatever I want. There is no control, there is no censorship. And yes, they are written by amateurs. Well, every uh, writer is an amateur before he uh, published his first book. Uh, worse is that many of these uh, fan fictions are written by teenager or they are written by woman. So, uh, and of course, it's just pornography. It's true that uh, fan fiction uh, has a very strong um, erotic component, but to reduce fan fictions to pornography is again uh, an, an operation uh, made by the mainstream media, uh, which has a very uh, clear uh, goal to denigrate it. Because, well, there is some pornography and there is a strong component, erotic component, but not all fan fiction is uh, pornography. Um, uh, yes, um, fan fiction is often um, connected, uh, associated with uh, so-called slash. So uh, the um, uh, stories, love stories between male characters, which are not necessarily uh, LGBTQ stories. They are stories written by females uh, about uh, yes, these um, male characters. Uh, but uh, yes, this is uh, so especially the uh, the kind of boys laugh uh, based on uh, manga stories. Manga uh, fandom is one of the strongest among fan fiction stories. So, and this is in in a way offensive for the official critics. How how these female how how do these female dare 
to write slash about men, no erotic stories about men, transforming, of course, the, um, the relations which are proposed by official um, official uh, source uh, for the fandom. Okay, and this problem, this rejection of fan fiction and uh, denigration of fan fiction is even more strong when we are talking about young adult and youth audiences and young adult literature. Uh, because, well, as we all uh, know, uh, even if the youth literature is defined by its audience, so by definition it's a literature for young uh, audience, for young readers, um, actually uh, the um, official um, young adult and children's literature uh, has been always written by uh, adults and has been controlled by adults. So uh, uh, it was written not so uh, much with the young adult, uh, with the child in mind, but with the idea of, the uh, of, of what the child of young adult should read. And, uh, so in fact, we could suppose that all this controversy and the uh, very negative uh, uh, attitude towards uh, fan fiction, especially when we are talking uh, teenagers and what teenagers read or should re uh, read, is about control. Okay, uh, Perry Noderman uh, uh, suggested once that children's literature is an act of colonization. Okay, so the adults uh, who position children as other, unable to speak for themselves and in need of control. Now the correction, it was an act of colonization because the situation changed. So Web 2.0 and fan fiction change the dynamics of power. And there is no, <laughs> no going back from this situation. Uh, so what, um, in what way fan fiction changed these dynamics which, which uh, we could traditionally find within children or young adult uh, literature? Um, fan fiction offers an alternative. It offers the young readers the freedom to bypass the gatekeepers, to bypass publishers, adults, educators, and uh, parents, because they, they cannot control what uh, the young readers uh, read, what they want, what text they want to follow. Uh, also, money is no issue anymore because fan fiction is, uh, is free. So there, there, there is no need to go to the library, to the bookshop, to buy a book, to buy a text. Um, young readers, um, which are part of fan fiction communities, uh, are both consumers and creators. And what's more important, and this is actually very positive if we uh, think about it, uh, they are not a passive consumers of um, literary products. They are very active. They, um, they think about the text. They discuss about the text. They, uh, they want to transform text if they are not, uh, if they don't agree with the, uh, with the uh, hypotext. Uh, and they are, yes, they are free of censorship. They are free of imposed rules, of rules uh, which uh, are imposed by the adults. They can express themselves, uh, themselves freely, also talking about things that they uh, could be ashamed. Uh, uh, they, they, they would not talk about freely uh, within the context of school or family. And uh, they discover, thanks to these uh, fan fiction platforms, archives, the power of sharing the, uh, the experience, of discovering that they are not the only ones to have certain dreams, expectations, uh, fantasies, but there is a very large community which, uh, within, uh, uh, which offers them a kind of security also. And, sorry, uh, so this uh, uh, means uh, they acquire new agency. Well, there are so many, and being in the community, they acquire power. They can 
uh, we know that n nowadays fans, uh, if they are not satisfied with the way, for example, a TV series goes, they, they, they protest, they are very vocal about it, they feel they have a right to express their, uh, their opinion. Um, and being part of a community is a, a very, uh, of this sharing experience, is very important um, part of fan fiction. And also this is, uh, uh, and this actually has been already analyzed, especially in the recent book, uh, this one, Writers in the Secret Garden, uh, they can learn. This uh, um, fan fiction is the uh, space of learning, of uh, so-called distributed mentoring, which is a very interesting uh, phenomenon. We all know that Facebook is a dangerous place, place of hate, of uh, cyberbullying. Actually, within the fan fiction communities, um, a positive and supportive attitude prevails. It was uh, counted that less than 1% of the comments uh, to the fanfics are negative or hateful comments. Usually the comments are very positive, so they help these um, fanfiction writers to mature, to develop their writing skills. So it's actually very positive things. And um, finally, uh, fan fiction allow um, the readers uh, become, who become um, authors to set things right. Okay, so if they don't like the official narrative which is proposed to them, they can fix it, that they change it. Okay, they don't have to go along with what is proposed by the official narrative. Uh, so, uh, let us uh, look in a positive way in fan fiction and uh, try to see if fan fiction can uh, have a positive influence on uh, the development, on the evolution of young adult fiction and young, young adult literature. Uh, actually, I would say that there are different uh, points we can make uh, in favor of fan fiction. It really gives us, uh, gives us an invaluable insight into young people's dreams, fears, needs, expectancies. We, we have never uh, had such a possibility before. We, I think we all know how difficult it is to understand what uh, young readers really thought about a book which was published uh, 50 years ago. We, we need to find some traces, so some, some mentions, uh, but it's very difficult to, to, to understand it. Now we have this uh, direct insight in what young people really want, need, dream. Uh, and uh, fan fiction lies about uh, the aspects of the official contemporary culture, life or mentality, which are frustrating or con uh, contested or refused by the young people. Um, it also um, shows how um, the young readers has a quite a different approach to the hypotext and the process of creative writing. Okay, so the hypotext is not established, it's not something fixed like it was still some uh, decades ago. Hypotext is something which can be made mine. I have the right to appropriate it and to change it, to uh, bring it near to my needs. Uh, fan fiction introduces topics and issues marginalized by the mainstream culture and literature and within young uh, adults literature, uh, these are especially um, erotic contexts, sex contexts and um, gender non-conforming contexts. Uh, but it also experiments new tools of communication and narratives. It proposes new ways of uh, um, narrating, of creating stories. And it also proposes uh, new genres and, and narrative uh, devices. So uh, here is the uh, uh, actually the classification of um, of practices um, used by fan fiction authors. But as I uh, said, this is quite a lot 
an old, in a way, text from uh, 1992. So uh, today, uh, this uh, universe of fan fiction is uh, far more complex. And you can see here the uh, main uh, page of uh, archive of our own uh, uh, website, and you can see that it's really very well organized. This is um, not just repository of several fanfics, they are really well organized in several fandoms, but what is more important uh, in tags and genres. Okay, so I said this is this is why these multi-fandom uh, archives are so important because uh, it's more about uh, the uh, writing technique, writing practice, and not about fandom as such. So we have um, we can see the fandom created some new genres, some new types of narratives such as fluff, angst, hurt and comfort, smart, drabble. Uh, there are also a kind of fix, 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 yes, if you want to fix what you don't like about hypotext or dark fix. Then there are such um, terms as alternate universe, alternate canon, fanon, head canon, and a very popular, especially now, fashion and crossover narratives, free form narratives. And uh, yes, there are so many more. Uh, if you go to tags on archive of our own, actually you can uh, see not only tags, but what is interesting, the, the lar larger characters indicate the most popular tags. So you can see that what uh, the uh, readers like particularly, for example, angst fix or fluff fix. Uh, fix. Um, hurt and comfort fix. These are more popular types of narratives. So what is the connection between um, fan fiction and literature? Uh, the most uh, obvious and linear uh, is uh, banking of fan fiction, uh, of fan fiction um, popularity and I suppose we all know uh, the uh, famous or infamous example of Fifty Shadows of um, Grey, uh, which was uh, born as a fanfic of Twilight a series by Stephanie May, also Gabriel's Inferno, a, a, another spin-off, we could say. So, um, first fanfic, then um, a novel. Actually, this practice is rather uh, Yes, it's most linear, also boring, and probably also harmful, because, well, Fifty Shades of Grey uh, only uh, intensified the opinion, the, the impression that fan fiction is just, uh, you know, porn writing uh, practices by obsessed females, so it was not really so helpful. But um, a far more interesting uh, interaction uh, between fan fiction and uh, literature, and here both popular literature and young adult literature, um, are different ways fan fiction is penetrating into this literature. It could penetrate on a them thematic level, as a topic. Okay, because uh, several uh, romances, now the romance stories for young adults uh, repeat uh, tropes, repeat schemes, uh, um, frequent in uh, fan fictions, and they reflect the new way of seeing, uh, for example, a romantic story like in Cinderella, when, uh, of course, we have the interaction and the um, attraction and love born on internet through fan fiction or blogs. And, of course, the Prince Charming is not a prince anymore, but uh, an actor, an actor who is uh, playing in the, uh, in the beloved TV series. So this is quite a frequent uh, situation. Uh, but uh, also fan fiction itself, itself becomes a topic, okay? So the protagonist, uh, even so more often, is a, a, an author of fanfics, okay? Uh, and um, it's interesting to see that uh, w while once be being the author of fanfics was something to be ashamed of, not to be token of, now it's the uh, motive of pride. 
Okay, so the, this is a motive of finding uh, the, the identity of, uh, uh, of uh, measuring s life success, uh, for example. So, um, uh, many of these uh, romance stories are quite uh, unimaginative. They are uh, based on the scheme of celebrity fic, I would say, like the spoiler alert by Olivia Date. It's not young adult, actually, it's more popular. Okay, so we have uh, the fan who is, of course, meeting and falling in love with her uh, favorite actor. Through fan fiction, they both write, of course. But um, what is um, maybe even more interesting that many of these um, uh, of this narrative incorporate, uh, for example, bits of fictional fan fictions. Okay, so you will have like a protagonist who is writing fan fiction and her fan fictions based on fictional TV series are part of the narrative. Okay, so the, we have several <laughs> levels of uh, metatextual use of fan fiction in this case. So, um, yet another case of uh, fan fiction which is not actually born as fan fiction, but it's written as fan, as fan fiction, is a very bad novel, Red, White, Royal Blue, which became, uh, in spite of being a very bad novel, uh, became an international uh, bestseller, also translated in Polish, which um, draws on the uh, attraction of slash stories, so the uh, love story between two boys. In this case, this is the son of the president, female president of the United States of America and an English prince. Uh, really very bad written um, book which is very similar to the way fan fiction stories are told and also incorporates several uh, stylistic uh, mannerism typical to fan fictions. However, uh, it was a kind of text uh, the fans, the young readers evidently um, were expecting, uh, they loved it, and it uh, generated a new, uh, as you can see, new fan fictions and uh, fan arts. So there's this never ending circle between literature and fan fiction. Um, so uh, in uh, in, Brit in uh, British, especially in American uh, literature for young adults, uh, the uh, influence of fan fiction is already quite evident. So what about Polish literature for young adults and Polish fan fiction? Well, being a global phenomenon in Poland, uh, fan fiction flourished uh, <laughs> and developed um, principally the, the uh, the characteristic of Polish fan fiction was a very strong um, bound with uh, manga and only in second place uh, other uh, fan, uh, fandoms and fan fictions de developed. Uh, and um, some Polish uh, teenagers read in English, well many Polish teenagers read in English, actually it is uh, a way of language acquisition, very important way of language acquisition for them. Some of them uh, write in English. There are also Polish uh, fix uh, uh, and Polish dis discussion among uh, fans. You can see here uh, a drabble, so the short narrative from uh, Muriel uh, in, uh, a forum, one of the most known, actually quite a really good text based on uh, Polydori's uh, vampire. Uh, however, the, um, in spite of this presence and this uh, development of the uh, fan fiction uh, among Polish teenagers, the connection between, uh, between uh, the uh, young adult uh, literature and fan fiction was uh, until recently practically not existent. Um, well, if we think about the uh, probably most uh, famous uh, Polish writer for, uh, of uh, youth, uh, youth novels, youth fiction for uh, girls, Małgorzata Musierowicz and her uh, Jerzyciada, no, her saga Jerzyciada, uh, well, the, the uh, 
the most technological uh, development she introduced uh, in her books are cell phones and they are used just to call other people. I think we all know cell phones nowadays are not principally uh, the uh, tools uh, for calling other people. So uh, we can see that the, um, the, the world presented in the Polish books for young adults was uh, quite uh, different from the uh, real experience and uh, real experiences of the world, but also from the uh, literary experience of fan, fan fiction um, of Polish teenagers. And this was also quite evident when uh, uh, Polish authors um, proposed first uh, books about uh, gender non-conforming orientation because, well, most of Polish young adult literature is still, and I am talking about 2021, is still populated by uh, rigorously heterosexual uh, characters. So not, not only you won't find uh, queer characters as protagonists of the books, but they usually don't exist even in the background. So the first books uh, which tried to introduce LGBTQ um, uh, thematics were all written, uh, we could say, from the old perspective. So the, 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 with no connection to the new way of treating, of handling uh, the gender non-conforming characters, which we uh, find everywhere in fan fiction. Um, and to uh, <laughs> finally um, meet a new approach uh, to, um, in this case, to LGBTQ uh, topics, but generally I uh, think a new approach to the young adult narrative, now the change of perspective, we have to wait until 2016. And here you have an extract from the interview of the author who uh, was the first to change this traditional pattern of uh, youth literature in Poland, uh, which was uh, Natalia Osińska. So uh, you can see uh, uh, that uh, while she uh, decided to write her first novel, it was not that she wrote fan fiction and then tried to publish it, and not uh, she, she didn't try to uh, actually to uh, to copy, to imitate fan fiction, but she um, did feel it was necessary for her to understand fan fiction, to read fan fiction, to understand her readers. And in fact, um, the trilogy, um, LGBTQ trilogy she proposed, uh, Fanfic Slash and Fluff, was uh, a great success, it, uh, especially Fanfic, it became an instant classic, uh, and was uh, met with a great favor among um, young readers. Well, you can see that uh, the titles, you know, uh, uh, fanfic, slash, and fluff, the, uh, these are not, uh, these books are not fanfics. They are not based on any um, pre existing text. So this is just a way of communicating with the, uh, with the readers. I know what you want. I know you, what you need, <laughs> says the author. Um, I am just telling you what kind of narrative you can expect. Okay? Uh, so, and uh, she, uh, uh, she really didn't want to create, as she says here, a traditional... Uh, she, first, she wanted to create a slash, okay? Because she saw that fan fiction is so keen on slash stories, but then she wanted to go beyond uh, the fan fiction um, narrative about slash and to, to uh, arrive to a larger audience. So um, fan fiction in this, in this um, context is an inspiration, but it's inspiration which is treated in a very um, creative way, and you have to get talent to do this. Okay, so uh, one thing doesn't exclude uh, doesn't exclude other, uh, and you can see here, uh, in fact, that she nailed this generational uh, gap in the understanding what is important, what uh, 
what is the way uh, of uh, perceiving the world, the problems of the world, and also the uh, uh, yes, the problem of sexuality. Okay, uh, I, I really like the um, the dialogue because between the father and uh, the daughter. She is still uh, a girl. Then she uh, she discovers she is trans transgender. Ok, so czytałaś ostatnio coś ciekawego, tak prega o Fireiro, słucham, to był crossover z uniwersum Avengersów. Sorry, I don't feel like translating it, it's a bit uh, difficult, so what did you, re uh, what did you read uh, recently? Uh, Empreg about Fireiro, what? It was a crossover from Avengers universe and you can see that there are two frequency uh, they they don't really uh, communicate and she knows it really uh, very nicely and so um uh, fan fiction trilogy was often uh, often uh, compared with uh, Małgorzata Musierowicz uh, Jerzyciada it was called also anti Jerzyciada. Well, of course, it's not a fanfic because it doesn't use the uh, uh, the protagonist created by Musierowicz. But in a way, it can be uh, uh, considered or seen as a fanfic, um, as a type of narrative which is lacking in the what or was lacking in the mainstream. A mainstream uh, Polish young adults literature, which proposed exactly this uh, very Catholic, very traditional, patriarchal and rigidly heterosexual world in which uh, teenagers don't use uh, computer or if they use it just to write emails and they uh, read Homer and uh, uh, poetry. So uh, and and fan fiction obviously doesn't exist there. Yeah. And also fan fiction, of course, uh, fanfic by Oshinska generated fan fiction. And it also became a model for uh, other narratives. So uh, after Oshinska, uh, we uh, had three novels published uh, in a, a very close range of time, Rado Boy by Dorota Jaworska and two um, novels by uh, Veronika Wodiga, Hurt and Comfort and Ants with Happy and And especially with Wodiga, you can see uh, also the title is a way of communicating with the young, uh, with the young reader. Uh, these are not books which are fanfics, they are not based again on any uh, pre-existent text, but they do communicate, they um, make understand the reader uh, firstly that the author uh, listen, listen to them, that uh, the author knows what they want, what they like. And then they, uh, they, uh, the, um, the title also communicates what kind of story. This, this is like a genre, no? a literary genre, heart and comfort or angst. Um, what kind of story they can expect. And uh, these uh, two books are also, uh, were also very well received. They are very good books, very good quality books. Um, Rado Boy by Dorota Jaworska, on the other hand, is a, an awful book. And you can see this is another um, example of uh, banking on uh, a new trend in uh, literature without looking uh, into actual quality, because this is a very bad fan fiction. It's written like a very, very bad fan fiction. Okay, I, I, I have uh, read really uh, better fan fiction than this books. I don't know why it was published because it is really pathetic. So. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, quite uh, telling that these books were promoted uh, with the blurs, with the um, associations with Oshinska, and Oshinska recommended them. He shouldn't have about uh, I'm uh, I'm telling about Jaworska, but as for Wodiga, uh, of course, it was uh, well uh, well earned uh, recommendation. And um, this change uh, in um, in the narrative uh, uh, narrative strategy is also uh, related, I think, to the generational sh change uh, as far as authors 
go. These are new kind of authors. These are uh, the authors who uh, experimented the uh, immersion in the fandom, the fandom culture and fan fiction. Uh, well, uh, Osińska less because she only she understood that she needed to uh, to immerse herself into fan fiction to write something that could actually communicate and engage young reader. But uh, if you uh, if you look at the uh, Wodiga's uh, bio, for example, she is quite young. She is not yet thirty. And she is uh, also queer, and she's not ashamed of it. You can see that uh, she says it quite openly. And she also is proud of being uh, a member of fandom. She, she's, she's not ashamed. It's, she, she doesn't see it as something which is uh, not really worthy of, of being uh, put forward. So this is a new attitude. And... Um, I think that uh, with the generational change in uh, as far as authors go, uh, this uh, will reflect in the change of uh, young adult fiction. And this process will probably accelerate once the people who have lived through the reality of fandom and fan fiction will start to reach each other. There will be more and more authors who have this experience uh, behind them. So uh, let's meet in 10 years from now and see uh, what will happen <laughs> in the meantime um, with the Polish young adult literature. It is my guess that the landscape of the young adult literature will be quite uh, different. It will change radically. And I am sure that fan fiction will uh, play a crucial role in this change. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, thought-provoking uh, lecture. Uh, thank you for introducing our uh, students, because uh, there are many students from our university to this uh, great and uh, intellectually stimulating uh, topic. I'm sure that there are questions. Uh, so I think that we can start with uh, some questions from the audience. Um, so please don't hesitate to raise your hand or uh, you can also post your comment in uh, the meeting uh, chat. Mm -hmm. Jillian, please go ahead. Pleasure. First of all, hello, Monica. Hello. First of all, hello. And then thank you very much for that fascinating lecture. This is an area I know very little about, really. But I wondered if you had any comments about fan translation. Because when, for example, um, the latest volumes of Harry Potter were coming out, young people in certainly in France and Germany and probably in lots of other places got together and divided the book up and translated a chapter each so they could get access to something that wasn't yet available in their language. So um, I'm just wondering, you know, how that features could because presumably that wouldn't be seen so negatively as other kinds of fan fiction because children are learning language, as you said about children in Poland who are reading, young people in Poland, um, writing in English. So maybe that is seen more positively. I just wondered if you had any comments on that. Uh, uh, well, yes, this is a very important uh, um, part of uh, fandom activity of, uh, no, uh, in non-English spoken countries, okay? Mm -hmm. Because of course, a British or American fandom doesn't do it. it doesn't know. But yes, because they <laughs> read Sadly. everything in Sadly. English. <laughs> yes, but uh, yes, in Poland, um, uh, the, um, there was and there still is going uh, quite intense uh, activity of translation and uh, also so called uh, scanlation, which, uh, which regards manga translation, the, the translation yep. of yep. Uh, uh, um, uh, comics. Yeah. So uh, it, it requires special technical skills as well, and the people are very keen on it. They are follow. They they, they, they follow uh, because well, of course, it's usually published bit by bit. No, so mm -hmm. the, uh, everyone is waiting uh, for the next uh, part. It was not so uh, positively uh, recited.
liked by the official um, uh, uh, publishing industry because, of course, this is, no. uh, uh, you know, it's rivalry. They, they didn't yeah. want uh, fans to be free to translate. They, they want them to uh, wait for the official translation yeah. and to buy the book. So this, this is not, not really seen as a positive thing generally, no? And there were also the attempts to, uh, to eliminate these um, unofficial translations, especially with Harry Potter, because, well, we know how Jean Rowling was very sensitive about this, and she, she doesn't like really, oh, Emilia, so nice to see you. I, I'm so happy to see you all. Uh, so there were, um, yes, she, she was really very vexed with this, uh, uh, translation practices. Uh, but what is interesting, what I um, found browsing through Archive of Our Own and also uh, other websites, that some of the best fanfics are translated. Right. Uh, that right. some, some uh, enthusiasts of fanfics translate the best fanfics into other languages. So this is yet another, another label. And, oh, well, I find it really very positive. Okay, because this is yes the labor of love and also the 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 way of developing the, the your translation skills and um, and understanding text. So yes, I, I found it fantastic. I, I'm, I'm you could understand. I am very positive about fan fiction. I I, I found it a, a very good practice, a practice which can. Uh, change in a positive way also our understanding of the literature for young people and uh, going beyond the control issue, which was always at the top of the problems of the uh, literature uh, for children. And I think this is one of the most irritating features of fan fiction for traditional educators, educators, publishers, now that we cannot, we, 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 we cannot control anymore the readers. They, they are independent. They, they gained their uh, their own autonomy. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. We have another question by Zofia uh, Brakonietska. Zofia, please. Um, go yes, ahead. I actually wanted to add something to that because I was in scanlation, like translating mangas into Polish for like three years when I was in middle school. Um, so I wanted to add to the uh, problem with publishers. So, of course, you know, um, like official manga publishers didn't really like uh, the fact that we did what we did and they all very often regarded our work as, as rubbish, basically. But I think that within the fandom of manga, there was always a big respect to the source material so for example in my group when we get an info that some some publisher from poland like bought the rights to translate the manga into polish and sell it then we would take it off our site and no longer work on it so i think that it's worth to mention that many uh, fandoms many fans that actually work on this kind of stuff have a lot of respect to people who actually make it and who, you know, if there is a possibility for the author to make money out of it, we won't take it away and won't make illegal copies. That was really interesting. Uh, an insider's perspective. <laughs> Thank you, Zofia, for, for this comment. I hope maybe there are more people who uh, have the uh, direct experience, experience of these uh, writing practices. So I would, yeah, I can see there are more hands, hands raised. So thank you. It was it was very very interesting. I learned many new things. Um, well, a new fan fiction, and um, I, I start with raising a, a problem and then a question. Um, I think I, I see fan fiction as a, a, a space, a room where, especially then young people um, can write their own um, writings, their own topics, and therefore it's very interesting to to study as a field of study again for adults. Um, but 
I, when you when you compare it with literature, as you as you do, I don't I don't know if that is fair, um, because I see it as a a field of their own where they can freely experiment. But when you compare that with literature in the sense of literature as we see it as literary scholars, uh, I don't know if if that um, is worthwhile um, doing it, and I don't think that's a question of control. Um, I'm always a bit um, in trouble with the word control uh, when you speak of uh, adults and, 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 and literature. Um, I think it's more like challenge, challenging and, and, and stimulating, um, where the question is, wouldn't it be interesting to study the language they use and, and the forms they use in fan fiction with uh, literally, or, or the language of literature. Um, well, because as I see it, the importance of the, the literary literature, that's in, and you all also um, um, valued as an adult. And of course we do, right? you, you valued some of that fan fiction of what, what was very interesting in your speech to the influence on indeed new novels and so on. Uh, and there too, you said, well, some of them are, are, are very bad and, and others are, are good. And I think that has to do with the language of literature that challenges young people, that, well, uh, confronts them in a way they, I guess, don't do themselves well. Okay. So, well, yes, as I said, uh, first of all, uh, fan fiction is so huge. So, uh, I mean, the, the major part of thing uh, of these uh, stories are rubbish, or well, rubbish. They, they, they have no really uh, literary value. They are uh, interesting or uh, important because they allow the uh, young people to express themselves, to create uh, narratives they, 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 they would like to read, to share their own um, interpretation of works. Um, however, I think we have a, a larger problem here that where, where, where does the literature start and where does it end? What is literature? What is not literature? Frankly, really quite a lot of Offi officially uh, published books and we tend to call literature books which are published. No, we we uh, we see a book published uh, uh, offic officially, no, like in a series, a Polish series, mniej więcej 16, no, which are books for uh, young people, and we say it's a novel, so it's a literature, but we uh, don't, uh, and, and sometimes these books are really really bad. They are <laughs> quite worse <laughs> than many of uh, many of uh, fanfics. So why are they still considered literature, even if bad literature, and fanfics are not considered literature? This is one thing. And another uh, thing, uh, as I said, I have a very small contact, well, little contact with fanfictions, but I did have some contact many years ago. And I remember um, a discussion with an author of an excellent fanfic uh, about Star Trek, Okay, yes, can I confess that I had this moment of infatuation with Star Trek? And it was written so well. Actually, it was far better than any spin off or tie in or these books, of official books, yes, which were published for Star Trek. And I asked the author, why don't you try to publish it? And she told me, because it won't be accepted by any official publisher because I changed the narrative into slash. I have quite explicit uh, um, sexual content and I don't want it. I don't want to be controlled. I want to express myself. And in fact, she had like, I don't know, 30,000 readers of her funding and I think it was well uh, and because it was an excellent text. So the, the problem of control, I, I wouldn't underestimate it. The, the control and the, the censorship. Fanfic really um, uh, allows uh, the people to express themselves freely. Why was an uh, archive of our own created? Because there was the uh, attempt to control 
the uh, the context uh, to bank on the context of fan, uh, fan fiction net. And also there was this uh, great purge, the, the elimination of many stories which were deemed not appropriate. So the, the control and censorship was the uh, the, uh, the ruin, of, as we can see, so of net fiction. It's very important for the authors of fan fiction to, to feel free. To I think that the, the, the control issue is very important here, really. And yes, what is literature, what is not literature? Today it's a question. Where does it start? Where does it end? Okay. It's a very tricky question. Um, there is a question in the meeting chat, which is directly connected to what you have just said about Star Trek, but you may want to add something. What fan fiction does you really like and would recommend to read something that is good quality and represents a new perspective? This is a question asked by Sabina. Uh, well, I I really cannot <laughs> recommend fan fictions. I don't. Uh, I haven't read so many. Uh, well, uh, but when I browse through archive of our own, uh, I'm looking at tax. Uh, actually, it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic to see how well organized are these uh, archives, how they, uh, well, they are so huge, okay, so uh, they, they are quite a lot of filters and you can look for the kind of narrative you uh, you are interested in. So, uh, of, uh, and since the fan fiction is shared uh, experience, it's always interesting to see how many people uh, uh, read a given text, how many follow it, because, well, many texts are long, like novels, actually. And you can see that if you have, like, 500 people following a fic, it's probably better than a fic which is followed by two people, okay? So then you, uh, you look at, uh, at tags, because, well, uh, the, the way uh, the tags are chosen, this is also telling about the, the kind of story which we can expect and, uh, well, how the author approached the story. For example, also the, um, the kind of interaction, so the comments, the discussion. Uh, this is very interesting about this Polish um, forum, Miriel, because actually uh, there is there are a very lively discussion about uh, the fanfics. It's not just, I love it, I want more, when will be another update, and so on. So uh, uh, here you can have a very in-depth analysis and discussion, which is very uh, interesting. And some texts are very good quality, very, very good quality. Also, usually authors... Um, uh, become better, <laughs> yes, with practice. Uh, in the book I already quoted, Writers in the Secret Garden, it's very interesting books uh, when uh, the authors apply the quantitative analysis, exactly, to fan fiction. Uh, and they discovered that this distributed mentoring, this discussion and comments actually help the authors to uh, become better writers. And they uh, discovered that, uh, for example, the um, uh, the vocabulary, no, the 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 the, the, the style is uh, improving uh, thanks to this mentoring. Also, the uh, institution of beta reader, for example, no, in fan fiction. So you don't uh, publish something. You have a kind of uh, yes, of this beta reading who is helping, who is uh, who is uh, correcting things. So this uh, a, a lot of work going behind. Uh, Best fix, I would say, yeah. And well, after the Fifty Shadows of Grey were published, many uh, fans uh, said, why did they publish this rubbish? There are so many better fix, no, uh, uh, better stories based, uh, based on, uh, on Twilight and not this rubbish, which was in fact harmful, I think, for the perception of fan fiction as generally, yeah. Yes, and it became uh, tremendously popular, you know, with the general public, not uh, fans of fanfic, but just mm -hmm. mainstream audiences. Yeah, show, and I think that in a way, the the this great success of uh, Fifty Shades of Grey shows us the the great potential that fanfiction 
pass, yeah? Yeah, but also shows the, the inner linear uh, way of thinking, uh, thinking when it, go, it comes to the publishers. No, because they, 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 they didn't uh, choose the best fanfic, they didn't choose the best story, but the most uh, uh, erotic or sexual, something that the scintillating story. Okay, yes. they, they weren't looking for the quality, but for the scandal or something that, that, that would uh, appeal to the basic instincts of the public. <laughs> yes. Maybe. Yeah. So. Yes. Okay, uh, do we have any more questions or comments from the audience? Hmm. Justina, please yeah. go ahead. This is, uh, this is more of a, um, of a comment really than uh, a question, a kind of maybe extension. Uh, I just wanted to, to draw the attention of the audience uh, to the IRSCL Congress um, uh, in, that is taking place in October. And actually, the I think the focus, or one of the, let's say, main themes uh, uh, of um, uh, of the Congress, if I may just, uh, I'm actually looking at the, um, the call for papers for the Congress uh, special issue of, of IRSCL, the, the journal, but um, the, that, that's maybe not that not, not that important. But um, uh, so one of the of the interests uh, of the Congress this year uh, is um, uh, the participatory nature of children's literature, right? So what indeed if we if we think of other possible agencies, other distribution of agency, let's say within children's literature. So it's not just the adult agency, but um, uh, the agency of children as creators, as, ma as makers, for example. And of course, uh, a related question, and I think this is maybe what what Jan was also thinking of, um, is what is this ideal child? So, for example, the ideal fan fiction author <laughs> that you know adults would like to 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 see to read. Um, uh, and what are the ideal adults, right? That will uh, that will appreciate uh, a child's text, right? I think we can we can maybe extend this discussion to uh, kind of outside fan fiction as such, but just talk about children's uh, creativity and then, you know, how how can we look at it? How can we look at children as as mediators, as offers of children, which I'm quoting from from the call. So. I think Monica's research is really very um, uh, uh, kind of on top of things here, definitely, uh, and very, very relevant to the current discussions um, uh, in the field. So just just a comment. And Monica, thank you very much uh, for, for, for this great, uh, for all these great insights. Oh, um, just, 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 I was in fact thinking sorry. about your conference uh, last year when you were talking about your experiment in Great Britain, no, in developing the the creativity of children. Yes, this uh, and and then I thought, but it was still the creativity guided by the adults. Yes, so there was still the control. I, I think it's very difficult to for adults to to accept that they could not have control. So it's okay for child to be creative. Uh, but uh, yes, th th there should be still a kind of control. And well, as uh, as far as children's literature goes, it, there is still well uh, up to a certain age, you you still have this control. Uh, but uh, there are really some fandoms which start very early, very young teenagers, like twelve years old or eleven years old. And this is beyond the control of the adults. Uh, well, so we, maybe we need to change the uh, our mentality. But on the other hand, I must say the uh, the publishing uh, the publishing industry, um, uh, which is uh, well, especially I think in uh, in the United States, we can see that they are going uh, in the opposite di direction, just to publish anything that would appeal. To young readers, no, like this novel I mentioned, Red, White, uh, Royal Blue, which is so bad, but so bad, it's like a very, very bad fan fiction, and it was published not because it has any uh, aesthetic value, but because you can m make money on it. 
So uh, I think the example of these uh, Polish uh, novels by Osińska and uh, um, and Wodiga is is really remarkable because um, they draw on fan fiction. Okay, they understand the needs, the expectations of young readers, but they are also able to offer them something that most fan fictions um, do not offer. Well, mainly this uh, narrative uh, which has uh, the uh, realistic context, Polish context. Now, th this is what is very difficult to find in fan fiction, but also, for example, in translations. Now, for uh, for young readers, but because translations from uh, from English show uh, American teenagers. American teenagers are different from Polish teenagers, let, let's be honest. And fan fiction tends to uh, create the fantastic narratives, or fantasy narratives, which are interesting and can offer quite a lot to the reader. But what uh, young readers evidently lack are uh, having this kind of fan fiction narrative, but put into the uh, context of Polish reality. So this is something that they won't find uh, any, anywhere else. And I, I think this is one of the main uh, motives of the success of these books. But if the book is bad, like Jaworska Radu Boy, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but uh, you can't help it that it won't have success, even if it tries to uh, now to imitate uh, these uh, popular fan fiction schemes. So the, 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 the readers are not so stupid after all. <laughs> Even without adults' guidance, they yes. know what's good narrative and bad narrative. And no. Of course. Thank you, thank you for um, for for this great comment, you said also uh, about uh, agency. When it comes to Road of Boy, um, I find it really fascinating that the, uh, this novel was heavily uh, uh, promoted. Really, it was promoted, and it still flopped, uh, which shows us that sometimes even promotion cannot help a uh, novel which is not at least decent. Mm -hmm especially when it's uh, a book for young readers who uh, don't want to read things which are not interesting, which are not good, which are not um, intellectually stimulating or just captivating. You know, books for young readers should at least be captivating or not at least they should be captivating. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I think that there are no other questions. And I think that we've had a wonderful discussion after an amazing lecture. So we would like to thank you once again for uh, for being our guest, for giving such um, a thought provoking lecture. And it was an honor listening to you. And we would like to also thank uh, the audience for all of their insightful comments and, and, and questions. We really appreciate your active participation in today's uh, lecture. It was an honor uh, having all of you uh, in Wrocław today. And in Italy at the same time. <laughs> yes, thank you thank for you. the invitation, Ed. It was such a pleasure to see you, Gillian and Dian and Emilia and all the friends. It was absolutely fantastic after so long time. And let's let's hope really that we will have a, an occasion to meet again <laughs> live. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.